Good afternoon, YouTube. Vermont Prepper with his third video of the day. Went video crazy today. Uh, I put up uh, one on a blazer. I put up one on the uh, apartment I live in and how I kind of use it as a workshop. And this third one is going to be about my Drake uh, tube receiver and transmitter that I use as a ham radio operator. First I want to give you an, uh, an idea of what I use for an antenna. It's a little portable antenna from Alpha Antenna and it's a multi-band meaning that it can go from 6 meters to 80 meter range and the cool thing about that is you don't have to tune it. So you don't need any antenna tuner with this thing. You just switch to your band and uh, it'll automatically tune into the frequency. So really cool. It's sort of expensive for a little portable antenna like 500 ish. I got the upgraded uh, uh, tripod but I guess it goes up about 18 feet total but well worth the money. I just contacted uh, South America with this thing which is not totally normal on 100 watts but uh, I was able to get some good propagation I guess and and uh, I was able to get over there. So, and that's from Northern Vermont. Here's a view of the uh, mountain range right outside the apartment here. And uh, there's the blazer. Did a whole bunch of upgrades. I urge you to watch the video on that. Uh, a lot of things done. All right, let's go in and check out the Drake system. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through a tuning procedure so that uh, anyone new to Drake, you don't have to go through all that troubleshooting that I did. So, okay, here's the system right here, and uh, we have it tuned in, and you can hear it. I'll go through all of this momentarily. I just wanted to give you an idea of what it sounds like. Okay, just lowered the gain on the antenna, so make it really low. In any event, here's uh, the twins, they call them, the T4XC transmitter on the bottom and the R4C receiver on the top, and pretty cool with the blue lights, uh, LED lights. I had the transmitter totally refurbished, and I'm going to do the same for the uh, receiver, I just haven't gotten around to it. You hook these up in tandem and they work together as a transceiver. So here's the accessories I have with it. I use a Shure microphone. The Model 444 works great with these. I have one other mic that also works, but the uh, Shure is known for its uh, uh, good capability with the Drake system. And they're Sometimes easy to find on eBay, sometimes not. Uh, here's the MS4 speaker system that I have. That's a Drake speaker for uh, matching. You can use any speaker though. Uh, and right there you see this uh, DOSI frequency indicator. And I'll show you why I use this. So the DOSI frequency indicator helps me calibrate my dial right here. So this will tell you the frequency digitally so that I can match it to the dial. So we are on the 20 meter band, which you'll see the band button, the band switch right there. It's 14 megahertz it starts at. And we're in upper side band mode. That's what you use for 20 meters. And you read from the bottom up on the Drake. So that should be at 14 and then it's 292 ish so it should be 14.292 ish and if I switch to mode we're gonna go to the dosi frequency uh, indicator and see what that reads and there we go 14.292 so to me that tells me that this is calibrated and I already calibrated it so I knew it worked. I just wanted to give you an idea on uh, 
how that dosi frequency indicator works. It's a really cool feature for those of you guys who work with tubes. Uh, it's about $140 on eBay, but again, worth it. And this right here is a uh, Autech uh, SWR and power meter. These are really hard to find, and I happen to have two of these things. You're going to pay some money for them, but they are just great uh, systems, a system to uh, uh, monitor your antenna SWR and your power. And I have it switched to the middle in the watts, and I have it for peak power. So it'll go up to 200 uh, watts, but you see right there the top indicator says it'll go up to 2000. And I have a couple Heath Kit uh, amplifiers that uh, this thing's going to get its use out of it once I get those um, hooked up. I have one that's fully refurbished and the other one is going to be getting furbished, refurbished, so we're going to hook them up to this. Alright, so the T4XC, you have a transmitter mode right here and then you have a receiver mode. If I switch to receiver, you see the bottom light went off on the transmitter and the receiver light went on. That means the receiver is now controlling the frequency. I choose to keep it on transmitter mode because the receiver one, the receiver uh, dial is kind of, it, once it gets hot, it kind of stops working. So that's why another reason why I'm going to get it refurbished uh, by a professional. In any event, let's go through the tuning procedure. So first off, we want to make sure that everything is zeroed out. So plate, load, gain and we want to make sure that you're switched I mean you can switch to whatever band but I, I do 20 because it's easy to find a nice frequency on that uh, and then you know band is 14 14 megahertz and then here's a 20 meter RF tune uh, knob it's set on 20 meters and you have the gain zero you have it set to XMTR and you're on single sideband and you're on upper side band for 20 meter band. All right, so let's get going. And I'm going to read from my instructions while I do this because I don't know it by heart yet. So bear with me. So you want to rotate the mode switch to the tune position. You kind of got to do this quickly. And you want to advance the gain control enough to get a plate current indication about half scale. All right, so mode tune, plate, oh sorry, the gain, to about half scale, go back, all right, so we did that, that's step one, all right, step two, you're going to rotate the mode switch to tune again, and then we're going to advance the gain control to the 12 o'clock position. And then we're going to adjust the plate for a current plate, a plate current drip, drip, uh, drop, sorry. All right, so we're going to tune. We're going to go to gain at 12 o'clock. And then we're going to look at the plate and we're going to see we want to go for a drop here. Now you see the drop right there. You want to drop it as far as possible. And then I want to move it back. All right. That's step two. Next, you want to go back to tune and you're going to push in the load control. So it's a spring. So this load, load control right here has a spring. And you can push it in and out. And you see, you push it in and out. And uh, what that does uh, is you want to load... You want to use, you want to find a relative uh, output. You want a maximum reading when you do that. So go to tune. And when you push in the load, that's what it reads. It's relative output. It's not plate amps, all right? So you want to adjust for maximum. So tune, load, and we're going to maximum, outlet, back, or output, and we're going back to back there. Then we're going to adjust our plate one more time. 
just our plate for a drop. Okay, you see it's a little bit higher now. And then we're also going to do the RF tune and we want the uh, uh, maximum output plate current, uh, maximum plate current on the RF tune when we're in when we're in mode tune. So here we go. Okay. So basically we are all set. And now what I do is I move the gain up all the way because in tune mode, that's when we're the gain knob acts a little bit differently with the plate. So now we can adjust the gain all the way up right there and that will give me the maximum transmitting power so if you see if I just key the microphone key the microphone a little bit test 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 you see it went to about 100 watts so we're at full power right here all right so uh, that's basically how you tune this thing and one other thing I want you guys to understand here and again sometimes uh, I need to read a little bit before I start playing around with stuff but you want this function knob on external mute the XT mute because what that does is when you key the microphone it doesn't uh, it doesn't give you feedback so if you have it just on on uh, when you key the microphone you're gonna hear your voice come through the speaker here and you won't be able to use it I mean it, it's a big squeal so I did that by trial and error uh, hopefully you guys uh, this Drake system is brand new to me and uh, took me a while to figure everything out I uh, also got some brand new Drake cables. There's a guy on eBay that makes them, and I highly recommend them because uh, in the back, the connectors are so close together that you just can't put standard RCA connectors in there. And you gotta use special cabling for some of the, some of the connectors. So if you, if you look, the, look up uh, Drake wires or Drake, uh, C line wires you'll be able to see what I'm talking about so in any event hopefully uh, you guys learned a little bit from uh, my trial and error uh, situation it took me a while to get this set up but I'm um, very happy with it and uh, started making contacts uh, right away it's it's working really good so uh, something that everybody should have in their uh, in their uh, preps is a ham radio and I'm gonna give you a little a little uh, idea on my thoughts on it now you have three levels of testing uh, on ham radio you have the technician which is your first level and that allows you to use VHF which is sort of short range and UHF you can monitor police bands and, you know, talk to your uh, contacts locally. You know, anywhere 5 to 10 miles, maybe longer if you're going through a repeater. And a repeater does exactly what it says. It just repeats your, your uh, radio uh, frequency and it repeats out your transmission so that you can conceivably get a couple hundred miles across depending upon line of sight. Usually repeaters are at the top of mountains. Uh, that's all well and good, but what happens in a grid down situation? Do you really want to rely on those repeaters to be working? And maybe some of them, a lot of them have backups. But me, I like to be self-sufficient. So that's why you got to go through and get your general license. It's really important. And the reason is, is that that will allow you to get on to, um, you know, HF frequencies. You know, like the 20 meter band. You know, 40 meter band, those are the two main ones, and then some of the others, uh, 80, and then they call 
the six meter the magic band which is uh, something I haven't toyed with I do have a six meter uh, little Heath kit uh, transceiver but I haven't hooked it up yet um, but you want to be able to transmit on HF frequency and then you can have an HF uh, transceiver in your car so if you're if you're not home and you're driving somewhere say you're a couple hundred miles out uh, someone in your family who has uh, a radio license you guys can talk to each other without the use of a cell phone or uh, anything else so really a uh, good thing to have I happen to have the, uh, the amateur extra which is the third level and that just gives you a couple extra uh, frequencies not much more than the general if you want to go through uh, anything just get the general don't stop at your technician and they're really easy to get you can sorta of, and this is kind of a cheat and I don't I'm not a proponent of this but uh, you do learn from it you there are free apps on the uh, in the App Store whether it's Apple or um, Google Play and they're the exact same questions as on the exam. So all you need to do is memorize a bank of 400 questions for the technician and another 400 questions from the general. And out of that bank of questions, you're going to get, uh, you know, maybe 35 to 50 questions uh, out of that. And it's going to be the exact same questions. So if, you mem if you're good at memorizing questions, you really don't even understand, need to understand the meaning behind it. Now that said, uh,